from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Jonathan Amberian in Helena. It's a new year and that means it's officially a new election season here in Montana. I'll have a closer look at some of the key races we'll be watching throughout 2024. And AI has been at the center of many debates and strikes. But how might the leaders of our nation be approaching this ever advancing technology? Well, we have an idea coming up at 636. And it may be a new year, but we're going to be talking about a commonality seen this year across the nation, inflation. And we're going to be talking about how that may change in 2024. Alrighty, it is 6.30 on this Tuesday edition of Montana This Morning. Jay McDonald and Matt Ellel with you bright and early. Many people having to go back to work today. It's that Tuesday after New Year's. It's a tough one yep. for a lot of folks. And uh, just looking at the temperatures, we're stepping outside. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, pretty frigid in several areas. Most areas into the single digits or low teens in southwest Montana, mm -hmm. but generally pretty clear skies yeah. overhead. Our temperatures this morning were sitting near zero for Butte uh, and have been out toward West Yellowstone. Seven degrees in Belgrade, low teens for the vast majority of the area. Generally, um, we're looking at sunny skies for the first part of the day. Uh, late in the afternoon into the evening, we start, start to see that cloud cover building back into the region. Temperatures should be near or above average for today and then cooling as we get closer to the weekend. I'm going to talk more in depth about snow potential in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Well, with the new year underway, the 2024 election season is about to get into full swing and it's going to be a busy year in Montana politics. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Amberian is going to take a closer look at some of those key races that Montana voters will be considering this year. 2024 is here and the political calendars have lined up to create one of the most crowded election years Montana has seen. From races for the top state offices to a campaign expected to be one of the most closely watched nationwide. It's a packed dance card for sure. Rob Saldine, a political science professor at the University of Montana, says it's clear which election is going to get the most attention, both within the state and nationwide. The race for the U.S. Senate seat John Tester has held since 2007. Tester, a Democrat from Big Sandy, has successfully outrun Democratic presidential candidates in the past, and he may need to do that again in a state Donald Trump won heavily in 2020. There may still be a contested primary to determine which Republican will face Tester. Gallatin County businessman and Navy veteran Tim Sheehy entered the race in June. He's advertised heavily and gotten support from Republican leaders like Governor Greg Gianforte and Senator Steve Daines. But while Congressman Matt Rosendale hasn't formally said he'll run for Senate, he says he's heavily considering getting into the race. Former Montana Secretary of State Brad Johnson has also announced a run for the GOP nomination. Saldine says conventional wisdom has been that a heated primary would harm a party's eventual nominee in the general election. But he said a primary might not be all bad, especially for a newcomer like Sheehy. I actually think a lot of the time it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, to get battle tested a little bit in the primary. Saldine says with the intense national attention on this race, the state could again see unprecedented levels of spending. It's going to be unlike anything we've seen. And, uh, and, and, and what that translates into, you know, money coming in, that, that means uh, advertisements. So, so, so yeah, uh, uh, get ready. We've, we've, only, uh, we've only begun. 2024 will be the second election since Montana got back its second seat in the U.S. House, and the two House races are shaping up very differently. In the Western District, we could see a rematch, as Republican Congressman Ryan Zinke again faces a challenge from Democratic Attorney Monica Trinnell. The Eastern District seat, currently held by Rosendale, may be open, and six Republicans and two Democrats have already filed campaign finance paperwork. One reason why I think it seems really likely that Rosendale is going to go for the Senate is because clearly all these Republicans have, <laughs> have launched their own campaigns. And they would not be doing that if they thought Rosendale was going to stick around in, uh, in, in that eastern district. While Republican Governor Greg Gianforte hasn't formally announced he's running for a second term in 2024, Saldine says it would be very surprising if he didn't seek re-election. And he's likely to start in a strong position if he does run. If you win that first term, you have a really good shot. I mean, take all other considerations off the table. You got a really good shot at, uh, at winning the second term if you want it. 
Democrat Ryan Bussey, a former firearms executive and now author and activist, is already campaigning and criticizing Gianforte on issues like property taxes. Tanner Smith, a state representative from Lakeside, is the only Republican who's launched a campaign for governor so far. There will also be two open seats on the Montana Supreme Court, including the Chief Justice position. The races are officially nonpartisan, but Saldine says partisan dynamics have emerged in some recent elections, and it's an open question what influence that could have this year. This is a, a nonpartisan election, and so you don't have that cue right there on the ballot next to the name Republican Democrat. Yeah, you, you actually have to have picked that up and, and retained that information. The official candidate filing period in Montana runs from January 11th to March 11th, so that's when we'll get the final picture on how the fields in some of these races are going to shape up. Stay with MTN and we'll have all the coverage from now through Election Day. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Well, in December, we've seen the European Union announce the world's first comprehensive artificial intelligence rules. And Pope Francis has called for an international treaty to make sure the technology is developed and used ethically. But what about the United States? Well, Scripps News Congressional Correspondent Stephanie Liebergen explains how Congress is trying to tackle the issue. The phrase AI or artificial intelligence has been in the news a lot this year, and for good reason. The new technology could have major impacts on your life in years to come. Here in Washington, lawmakers are considering stepping in to the AI space, trying to craft a bill that would embrace the new technology and its benefits while minimizing the risks. The phrase artificial intelligence might make you think of this. Good morning, sir. In today's reality, it's not quite there yet. But the government recognizes the possibilities and pitfalls of the future of AI. We need to be the leaders in the international community. Lawmakers don't want to make the same mistake they did with social media, not acting soon enough and then watching the platforms grow with little oversight. Senator Mark Warner says AI is an enormously challenging issue. And while he doesn't think comprehensive legislation is in the near future, he believes Congress can tackle bite-sized pieces. A lot of the big tech companies, you know, say they don't mind regulation, but when you put, uh, you know, paper to pencil and actually write, leg write legislation, they always find a reason to be against it. So I thought starting with undermining trust in public markets just made sense from a practical standpoint. Another piece, artificial intelligence and elections. With 2024 looming, lawmakers see it as a top priority. And AI-generated videos are already being used on the campaign trail, like this one from the Republican National Committee. Financial markets are in free fall as 500 regional banks have shuttered their doors. Beyond elections in the financial system, Warner thinks national security should be a top priority. As, as chairman of, of the Intelligence Committee, I'm working on bipartisan legislation about how we use AI in our intelligence domain, but also how we use it in a responsible way. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer hosted nine AI Insight Forums this year to help senators better understand the benefits and risks that come with AI. Now it's up to lawmakers to apply what they learned as they try to write legislation in 2024. Stephanie Liebergen, Scripps News, Washington. And as we're in the new year, many people are reflecting back on 2023. And one commonality seen last year across the nation was inflation. And this morning, our Kelsey Boggs is taking a look back and diving into what we might see price-wise in 2024. Egg prices soared at the start of 2023. And the price of gas, as we all know, has been a roller coaster throughout the year. According to AAA, the average price of gas in Montana currently is $2.98 a gallon. But one month ago, it was $3.19. Nationwide inflation hit hard in 2023. What's in store for 24? As I think of the economy in 2023, it's kind of a choose your own adventure. After a year of fluctuating prices, we did see things like grocery items come back down, eggs, they went up and then they're back down. Things are seemingly returning back to normal. It's a good thing. <laughs> the Consumer Price Index's inflation forecast for 2024 shows a slight drop, with average consumer price inflation in 2023 reaching 4.1% and 2024 dropping to 3.8%, compared to 2022's peak of 9.59%. We kind of got 
some things under control with inflation. But with 2024 being an election year, only time will tell what prices amount to. It will be interesting to see what happens. Daryl Ehrlich is the editor-in-chief for The Daily Montanan and has covered numerous stories this year in Montana regarding inflation. I think we were all surprised at how much people were talking about property taxes. The hot topics, property taxes, affordable housing, and energy rate increases. For Montanans, residential property taxes and housing. And then I think the other thing that you have to marry with that is energy costs. Being a homeowner, he knows firsthand where some of the frustrations with property taxes lie. I think everybody's so focused on the the presidential election or even the tester yeah. election. I think if we're looking at Montana, what's going to happen here in the treasure state, I think that's going to be really fought at the local legislative level. Ehrlich is looking forward to the conversations to be had in the new year. There's going to be a lot of talk about property taxes. There's going to be a lot of talk about Medicaid. I think that there is going to be an overall national conversation about inflation, about wage. And is celebrating the low costs we've reached at the end of 2023. And if mm -hmm. people's checkbooks feel comfortable to them, they're probably going to be happy, regardless of some of the other stuff that's going on in the world. In Billings, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. It is 640. Now we're going to take a short break, but still to come, we're going to meet a man whose love of old clocks carries over to a love for antique Christmas lights and a desire to preserve them. We'll be right back with that. Story.